Warning, this video contains sharks. Enter at your own risk. I came across this circuit board in a scrap lot on eBay and I bought it because of these interesting looking parts on the other side. As it turns out, these parts are the AD14160. Fun fact, there actually used to be four of these parts on the board, but I had previously removed two of them and sent them to Silicon Insider, who happened to be in the country at the time visiting Curious Mark. They wasted no time opening one of them up and threw it under the microscope to see the shark silicon doodle hidden on the chips inside. In this video, I'll finally be opening one up so I can take a closer look under the microscope for myself. But first, we need to talk about the circuit board. This circuit board was developed by Ixthos. After doing some research, I found that Ixthos was a manufacturer of VME SBCs, or single board computers. They merged with DY4 Systems in 1997, a Canadian company with similar products. A few years later, in 2004, DY4 would be acquired by Curtis Wright for $110 million in cash. While searching for more information about Ixthos, I came across a listing for a functional version of this exact board. According to this listing, this is the IXZ 1644-0-B3110 real-time multiprocessing module in a 6U VME form factor. Surprisingly, this listing also included a datasheet for the board. The datasheet states that this board was capable of processing at a rate of 1.9 gigaflops. Perhaps the most interesting tidbit in this datasheet is the line, Ixthos worked with analog devices incorporated to develop the advanced packaging required to achieve the processing density for the IXZ16. Since these parts were made custom for this application, that might make them somewhat rare. These parts in question are the AD14160 and each contains four separate ADSP2106 silicon chips. This board also contains a single ADSP2106, which is great for a size comparison. The ADSP2106, also referred to as the Shark or Super Harvard Architecture Computer, is a 32-bit signal processing microcomputer. These chips were fabricated using a CMOS process and could complete one instruction every 25 nanoseconds. As I mentioned before, the AD14160 contains four individual ADSP2106 dies in a multi-chip module package. The datasheet for the AD14160 goes into quite a bit of detail with some nice diagrams about how the individual dies are connected internally and what resources they share. The datasheet also has a diagram showing the internal layers of the ceramic MCM and how it was constructed. If you want to learn more about this part, I'd highly recommend checking out this datasheet. In addition to these quad sharks, there are plenty of other chips on this board, including multiple FPGAs, PLDs, flash chips, a VME controller and its companion chip, along with a large amount of buffer line drivers and bidirectional translators. One thing that my circuit board is missing are the four additional mezzanine cards two of which appear to be for DRAM, and the other two for front panel high-speed I.O. Removing these parts from the circuit board is simple enough. I first removed any labels, and then cleaned them with isopropyl alcohol before applying hot air. I used my hot air gun with the air set to about 900 degrees Fahrenheit in order to melt the solder holding them in place. It took a bit of time for all of the solder to melt, but I was eventually able to remove the parts. I decided that while I was at it, I might as well remove all of the other parts for future die extractions. I decided that it would be best to make the bottom surface as flat as possible before I opened up the quad shark. The remaining solder balls were pretty easy to remove simply by pushing them, but a razor blade helped to speed up this process, and the end result is a nice and flat, smooth surface. With everything ready, it's finally time to open up this part. Unfortunately, I don't have a fancy piece of equipment like Curious Mark's Drillenium Falcon. 
Instead, I like to open up these welded lid parts with sandpaper. I use these adhesive backed sandpaper discs and stick them to a thick piece of glass. The glass is a relatively flat surface and helps me keep an even pressure as I sand. Each edge gets sanded until the lid can be removed. I typically like to sand one side less than the others so that the lid can still be closed after opening. Unfortunately, I was a little overzealous in my sanding and the lid opened up prematurely. Even more unfortunate, the part is so slippery that my hand slipped and I touched one of the dies. At any rate, the part is finally opened and the dies inside can be viewed. I found it interesting that the dies were all oriented in the same direction. I would have expected for each to be rotated 90 degrees to each other, but I assume they can rut things however they want on the internal layers of this MCM. As it turns out, these ADSP 21060 dies are huge. Based on the fact that these parts here have a 1997 date code, it's possible that these were made on a 150 or 160 nanometer CMOS process node. And now it's finally time we can throw it under the microscope to get a closer look. Scrolling over to one of the edges, we come to the Shark Silicon Doodle, along with a Mask Works date of 1996. This doodle is only about 200 micrometers wide, but includes intricate details including some jagged teeth and even gills. The main components on this silicon chip are outlined in the block diagrams in the datasheet, which include the core processor, an I.O. processor, internal port logic, and SRAM. The biggest section on the silicon chips by far is the dual-ported 4 megabit SRAM, which can be accessed by both the core processor and the DMA controller inside the I.O. processor. In total, the SRAM takes up about two-thirds of the silicon chip. If you're interested to learn more about the different components on this chip, the datasheet goes into detail and explains each one's function. Links to all of the datasheets referenced in this video can be found down in the description below. Overall, I'm glad that I picked up this board and had the chance to open up one of these beautiful MCMs. I have what seems to be like an endless supply of equally interesting parts that I'll be opening up to take a closer look at for future videos. If you're interested in seeing more things like this, I hope that you'll subscribe. Other ways to support these videos would be to like and leave a comment, both of which I would greatly appreciate. You can also check out the stuff that I have for sale on my online store like PCB coins and silicon wafers. Don't forget to drop by the Chip Chat Discord server if you want to see what I'm working on in between videos. Links for everything are in the description below. Thanks for watching!